Junkies and this is my second Steve McLaren Tactics video Oh what lucky people you are and this one is talk about my 442 now my 442 I'm using it as a more attacking tactic solely because of the midfield roles I need to use to make it authentic really um, I, to be honest I'm not a massive fan of this tactic I if I was making a 442 like this on my own, I would have changed the roles quite dramatically. Um, I would have, yeah, but I will, I will talk about that as I go through. Now, I've, I'm recording this right after recording my 433 video. Um, I've just pulled out one of the players and popped in another striker, and I'll swap them back over when you, you'll notice it is now Harry Kane. If you've watched the last video, if you haven't, watch it. I'll probably put a link up at the end. Um, Harry Kane is now part of the team and Jack Cork of all people is come out. So um, I will repeat from the back for anyone that hasn't watched the first video but I'll do it quickly. If you want a more in-depth talk on the back four then go find the 433 video. This video is going to be probably a fair bit shorter because I'm going over a lot of your stuff so I'd recommend you watch that first and then come back to this. Or watch this first and then get in better explanation afterwards I guess. In goal I've got Angus Gunn currently who is getting his first cap for England. This is a this is his lineup for a friendly or this was the lineup for a friendly before I switched it to 442. So actually I might play 442. Anyway, now let's not talk about the tactic now. Let's talk about no let's talk about the tactic. Let's not talk about my FM dreams and hopes. Anyway so Angus Gunn has done the role of Scott Carson. Scott Carson was very much a regular goalkeeper versus the goalkeeper defend. Uh, fullback Alexander Arnold is playing the role today of Mika Richards. Again, Mika Richards was fast, strong, uh, good in the air, an okay crossing ability. I never saw him particularly as an attacking fullback, but then he wasn't a defensive fullback either. So, fullback support is perfect for him. Across to the left, we've got Ben Chigwell playing the Wayne Bridge role. Again, Wayne Bridge was never quite as attacking as Ashley Cole. But he was still an attacking fullback, so I'm going for fullback attack for him. In the middle, I've got Sol Campbell and Jolion Lescott being played by uh, Michael Keane and Rob Holding. So Rob Holding is playing the Sol Campbell role for today. Uh, Sol Campbell is very much a ball-playing defender. I felt he had the eye for a pass when he needed it. So that's what I've gone for. Julian Lescott, I've always said, is very much a supporting defender. So that's a, cent a central defender regular defend and that's the role that Michael Keane is currently playing. Uh, those two, that, that three, they have a keeper and the two centre backs are not my regular, they're just players that are in to get a bit more experience. So moving forward, I have Jordan Sancho playing the David Beckham role. Now in the last video, the right sided player was further forward and he was playing the role of Sean Wright Phillips. David Beckham was a completely different player and this was a big argument before the game kicked off. On the right hand side, was it Sean Wright Phillips who's had the speed, the youth, or would it be David Beckham who had the ability and the knowledge but wasn't quite at his physical beacon? He was never a, you know, run at defences style player before. I've gone for George, for Jaden Sancho um, playing the, yeah, the Beckham role again. I'm going to say that again. So... The back and roll is a tricky one. I've gone for wide midfielder and support and I've made some additions to it. I've asked him to cross more often because Beckham loved to cross. I I was tempted to go for more risky balls, but I don't feel like he was a, a player of through balls necessarily. He loved, you know, to cross it. Um, cross it like Beckham. So... That's what I've gone for. I've gone for cross, cross more often to roam from position because Beckham was allowed that at this point in career. He was very much a, a senior player. He was given the freedom to do what he wanted. And many people claim to the detriment of England, but there you go. And I've asked him to sit now because that's what he wanted to do at the time. He was at the time he wanted to play more centrally. Basically, he wanted to sit in with Gerald and Lampard and create an absolute cluster of a midfield three. Um, so he would, when he was playing on the right, he would sort of just see it narrow and occupy that space. Uh, if I was making this tactic myself, I would have him on an attack duty. 
but Beckham was, I don't feel Beckham at this stage of his career, wasn't a stack duty. He, he didn't have the ability to get up and get back. So I've gone for wide midfielder on support. The issue I have with this role mainly is that I don't have any Beckham players. I have lots of very young, um, quite attacking players. What I might do is put on a, a, put a central midfielder, maybe a slower central midfielder than I have, and put them on it. Who have I got on the side of my... Where is he? I'm sure I've got... No. I thought I had um, Jordan Henson. Also, I didn't bring up. Jordan Henson is the kind of player I think about. And the, on the game now, he's 31. He's not a particularly fast player. I was going to look at his stats. This isn't something I thought about until recording this video right now. But I could put someone who hasn't quite got the speed, but has got the ability, which is Beckham at the time, to uh, play that role. But that's something I should probably look at when I'm not recording a video. Uh, opposite him in the Joe Cole role is, is uh, Harvey Barnes. So Joe Cole, again, was very much, a, a, I saw him as an advanced playmaker attack, playing in the forward role. But of course, when we went to 4-2, four, four, he was playing further back. So I've got him as an inverted winger attack, um, which, you know, comes with ease. I feel that fulfills the role. I might I might tweak it to be closer to an inverted, to a inside forward at some point. What am I missing? Cross this often take more risks, is that all I'm missing? So yeah, I'll probably tweak it to be a bit more like that when I play, but again, I'm, I I have very little faith in this formation. I might I probably won't use it as much. Um Yeah. The idea is it is to be my get out of jail, but it really it needs at least it needs a one more attack for me to be a bit more aggressive, but you know, I'm a I'm like that. So um in the middle, in the Gerard Lampard axis, I've gone for a central midfielder support and a role, Roman playmaker support. Now, I've literally, literally just changed this before I started this video. I did have um, Ali was as, there as a box-to-box -box midfielder, and uh, I had Rice there as a deep line playmaker support. Now, the reason I've just changed it is, talking about the last video, I was thinking about, when I was talking about Gerard pulling the strings, I was thinking about him doing it all through the game and it sort of it came to me as well, Mike he did it even after Beckham came on even after we switched to a 4-4-2 it was Gerard playing this play, uh, Gerard playing the balls out now so I've swapped over it's basically but I've swapped over playmaker so my central midfielder is still has got a whole position on it on him um I might put something like dribble less on him as well just to to stop him from from running off of it. now personally if it was me I'd have a central midfielder defend here um, with a Roman playmaker next to him and then a wide midfielder attack. That would be how I would change this formation to make it workable. And I may, in important games, I really need to, I probably will change it to that. Only because I'd like to win. And I, I can't sit here and I feel this is a fairly true to life recreation, but I can't sit here and say I'm going to play a tactic that I don't believe in because I'm not going to. So it's either I don't switch to it and it just doesn't get used or I edit it a little bit. Uh, yeah. So that's the Frank Lampard role next to him. Uh, I have asked them to swap positions. It should still be on. Yeah. No, they don't swap positions. They're supposed to swap positions. Now they swap positions. I Something happened at some point and a load of my instructions got wiped. I completely lost my set pieces. Um, presume for an update i don't know so uh it was only afterwards when i realized that my uh, players weren't doing what i'd asked them to do in corners and stuff i actually went back and had another look and i was like oh completely wiped it cheers guys so yeah so that's the that's the the roles i've got there so they'll swap position the idea of them swapping position is that lampard and gerard didn't play with one of them sitting back and letting the other one bomb on they both bombed on so i can't Put, I, can't, I, I can't make a tactic with both bomb on, so I've got to swap positions to recreate that. Similar to the way that I did with the 3 5 2, in which I had the Lindegaard and the Alley roll swapping position to create the idea that they're both bombing on, and uh, while one was was uh, creating the, the link between defence and attack. <sighs> and then moving forward, so 
I talked a lot in the last video about how I first thought of Peter Crouch as a target man in the 4-3-3 and then changed into a deep line forward attack. I felt, and FM Pressure, who changed my mind originally, agreed that in the when Defoe came on, because Defoe is the poacher there. I know Rashford is the poacher there, but Defoe was playing that game, if you know what I mean. That's who he's based on. That, that allowed Crouch to focus solely on what he was doing. So he could then play to his... It's not, not necessarily play to his strengths, but play to maybe Jef, uh, Jermaine Defoe's strengths. And play more singly. He didn't have to worry because it would have hurt the team anyway if he had started to drop back because the, the wingers were further back. So if it, sorry, it would have hurt the team if he had pushed forward because the wingers were further back. That's what I need to say. So he played more as a target man. They could get the balls out to him. And then he had Defoe right next to him for the knockdown. And that is something, that, again, Jonathan Wilson talks a lot about the book. He says, once the foe came on, they became a much better, we became much better attacking because there was someone there. To, like, the defenders were still close on him, looking for the knockdowns. But the foe was there to, to cause an issue, and they had to now think about him as well, and not just crouch, not just, you know, two players either side of him looking for that knockdown. So he was allowed to play much more as a target man. And Defoe, I, if you, if you think Defoe at any point in his career played anything other than a poacher, come fight me because he didn't. <laughs> Defoe is is and there's there's nothing wrong with that. There's a role for those poachers as long as you factor it into your side. Defoe was very much a poacher. Yeah, so a vast role that Defoe was playing. He he likes to 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 float around and be in the right place at the right time. That was his great skill, and he was very good at it. So why why do anything else? Um, if we talk about Texas wise I've gone, the last one was balanced, I didn't mention it in the last video, but my mentality was balanced. In possession, very much the same, uh, with extremely wide attack and width, passing space, down the flanks, direct passes in higher tempo. The point of this is to try and very quickly get the ball to the wide players who are playing even wider, I'm doing a lot of hand signals again, who are playing a lot wider, and then they can get the balls into the box for the target man. Uh, that's another reason why I've kept the target man on this one. Because if this is going to be my we really need a goal tactic, I would much prefer them to play the earlier balls out to the target man. So um, it's, while it's wasting Kane's ability a little bit, he still is has more than enough about him to play a target man. He's just... A more nuanced target man. So I, guess I was thinking about playing as a deep line forward, but I felt target man was a much better role. Um, transition again is the same. Long kicks on the keeper, counter when we were in possession. And then, so I've, I've, I'm going to put Kestock in. So if, yeah, the tactic is it's basically the same as it was last time. Um, my, the more urgent pressing is certain that, you know, I often, a lot of the time I will see especially one of my centre-backs going on a, a nice long jaunt with a, a striker that's dropping deep. If I see that, boom, that goes off. If anything, I might even drop it down a little bit. It depends on how the game's going. Get stuck in because I like it, and the low line, line of engagement because I want to sit tight and then press them. That's what, what the pressing's for. Press them as soon as they come into our zone. Yeah. So that is my slightly quicker video on my 4-4-2. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please like, share and subscribe. I know it's beggy, but this is a tiny channel. Um, and it's, you know, it's something I do for fun. I'm not one of the big channels of then still begging because that's more money in the pocket. I am a small person who is, who is, you know, hoping I can get stuff seen by as many people as possible. So doing those things really does help me. Um, at the end of this video, Around about now, I will have my FM podcast up again. Uh, if you've watched last video, you see this already. But I talked with Tony, FM Grasshopper, and Mike, FM According to FM. Uh, we talked a little bit about the saves, about the history, and we did a quiz um, in which one side is still very much aggrieved about the result. But that was great fun to do, and the guys were brilliant, and they carried me very much in that podcast so come listen to those, those two professionals and me blustering on like i have now and forgetting my words 
On the other side, I will put my 4-3-3 Steve McLaren tactic video for those that haven't seen it and would like to. If this has piqued your interest, go check that out. I do have more. I have more podcasts. At the moment, I only have wrestling ones as of recording this. And I do have more tactics videos at the moment as of recording this. There is only a Gareth Southgate one, but I intend... There will be a, and the, the 433 one, but there will be far more in the future as this is a tactics based experiment. So it's every competition I go in with a new tactic. I believe the next one is like a 442 from 1994. So, yeah, another 442. So, if you like this 442, see why you won't believe what I do with my next 442. Anyway, guys, that'll be up on the screen definitely now because this is the end of the video and I'm signing off with another awkward goodbye. Goodbye.